So unless you've been living under a rock as a developer, you probably know Python and all the projects that it has in its package environment. And it just has so many out there. It's been around for decades now. And a lot of the packages are very mature, been tested and used. And it's, it's a really great language in truth. Now, criticism that Julia has been facing, especially when it was newer, was that its package environment isn't nearly as mature as Python's. But as the years have passed, Julia has developed more packages, but some, some areas are still a little bit deficient and sometimes you just need to call Python packages. And that's what we'll be going into today. So we're gonna go into PyCall, it's another Julia package that allows you to work with Python packages. It allows you to import the packages into your Julia script, but then we'll also go into another package called Conda, which will allow us to install with pip and show how the two can work together. Before we go into that, please give this video a like and subscribe, and let's start with some of the documentation we have here. Okay, so first here we have PyCall, PyCall itself. This is all the documentation. All the links will be provided down below. It describes a lot of different things, or if you want to specify see different environments, because they're, if you don't want to use the Conda environment, maybe you have a different one. This shows just how to set up all your paths. But the main stuff we're gonna go into is the usage and how to set all this up and how, how to pi import and how to install with Conda correctly. Now looking at Conda, which is the other package, it's a similar idea, it has a lot of documentation. You can also install with Conda itself through here, but we're gonna look at the pip portion of it because this is what's gonna be used with the pi call portion and it allows you to install packages, work with them and everything you need. Okay, so first, just making sure that you have the correct packages. You wanna have Conda, this is the version I'm currently working with, and then PyCall is the other one. And then we're also gonna be using plots. Now for the Conda part, it's better to just use it in the REPL here, and there's a couple steps you need to follow to set it up. One thing is to get your Python directory, and if you define it as env and then call it, you can call conda.pythonder. And okay, so we have our string. This is where the conda Python directory is at. So we know that this is the environment. And one of the first steps, which we'll show back here, is this conda.pip interrupt true and okay, so this is this is one of the first steps you have to do before you actually pip install anything. And the end that we just defined right here is what you would put into this, this statement. Now mine's are already set to true, it's already set up, so I don't need to do this step. I just want to show that and then that env is what you would get from this this line here so if we wanted to install something let's say okay so first let's say we want to look at our list so list env and this is the list of packages that conda already has installed so we you can see we have tk we have we have pillow numpies right here so we we have a good amount of packages and you can always install more and that's that's how you would go about it so just to show let's say we wanted to install scipy so install scipy, close parentheses, and then just let it proceed and it's gonna install the package and add it to our list. All right, now, now that it's done installing, let's check out the list again. You should see added to the list of environments. And if we look for it, we have scipy right here. Now that's pretty much the main thing you need to take care of in the REPL. So it's, it's good to put that Conda environment in here. And if you need to install stuff, add stuff, whatever, you can take care of it in the REPL. You could also do it in a script, but I find it a bit more fluid down here. And let's now go to an actual script. So hopefully at this point, you, you have packages installed and now we're using PyCall. I'm gonna go through a NumPy example because NumPy is a really famous package that a lot of people use. We have PyCall, I'm gonna import it. So you would import it here, mp equals py import of NumPy. And then we're gonna do a simple call to the sign function. We have mp sign x, which is inserting. So this pretty much looks exactly like Python right here. Boolean Python already syntactically look pretty similar. And right here, if you were to just look at this one line, this pretty much looks like Python. Now, if we call it, you can see we got an output. Okay, so that was that was simple for a scalar. Now, let's say we wanted to insert an array. Now, in here, our array is set up as a 2D array. So you can see we have two rows and four columns. Yeah, four columns. And then I'm just doing a couple different cases just to show how it works. I have pi here. This is a Unicode character, but it's set up as an irrational number. I have a float here, an integer, and then just, you know, I just try to cover my bases. Now let's say we insert all this into the sign function and we get a 2D array and output it and it matches up with what we inserted. So that all works. Okay, so now I'm going to another example. Let's say you really like using polyfit and polyval from NumPy. 
that's another package that I've used a lot, especially back when I code in Python a lot more. And it's really good. And so let's say we have this X data, this Y data. This is more V shapes, but I'm gonna say it's quadratic right here. We're gonna fit it and then we're gonna display what this P polynomial comes out to. Now this is our output. This is our three element vector. If you read the documentation on polyfit, this is correlated with the uh, three components. So we have the squared, the linear value, and then just uh, the scalar itself. Then we wanna insert this into polyval so we can actually get a polynomial fit. So now we're using polyval. So once again, you can see I'm calling numpy, calling polyval. I'm inserting this P, I'm inserting this X1. So X1 is now our range. We're gonna get this P1, and then I'm just gonna plot everything. So X and Y is the data. So that's all this stuff right here. P1 and X1 is gonna be this polynomial fit. And we see how it plots out, see how it all works out. Okay, and here's our fit. Now it's not the best fit because I have five points of data and it's trying to do a quadratic fit on this V shape, but you get the idea, right? So we have our data points, this is our fit, and you use that range data, it all worked out. We got this poly val and uh, it all looks good. So this is just one or two examples on how to use PyCall. The documentation also covers some other examples, how to make structs and all of that. So if you need something more complex, it has a nice example with the polynomial stuff. It's something that I use every so often because like I said earlier, Julie just has some deficiencies in some areas of the package environment. While yes, I would like to develop it and produce it for the world. I also got a lot of stuff to work on. So I sometimes I just can't do it. And I know there's a good Python package out there. So hopefully you found this helpful. Julia is a great language, but sometimes you just need that extra help from older languages and Python, Python is there to fill in the cracks while Julia still gets bigger and better. That's what I have for you this week. So in the future weeks, hopefully this coming month and the next month or so, I'm going to be covering more math topics and more specifically just me doing math on the screen. It's another area that I wanted to kind of bridge into the math, some physics, all that stuff also helps me because that's actually where I'm at in this world. Please give this video a like and subscribe. If you have any other packages, feel free to comment in the section below, tweet at me at Twitter at DJ's Office Hours, or email me at DJ's Office Hours at gmail.com. Hope you learned something new, and I'll see you guys next week.